and that was not God's plan. Do, does your theology get shaken? Does the way you pray now change because of this journey? I think it does. It really does. The, theolo the, the theology of prayer. The theology of prayer. You know, we went to the wall with God on this. We claimed promises. We read them to hope. We read them to ourselves. We claimed them. There they are, asking you to receive it, your joy may be filled. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and all those wonderful promises from God's Word. But then there's a verse that often we don't want to look at. <laughs> and we know that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Mm. Now, I'm not suggesting we pray in a weak, wimpy way. Oh, if it be your will, God, please. No, we, we pray fervently about this. And we have that promise, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Hmm? But what when God says no, then you realize that it's tied up in God's bigger purposes mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. and for others. The things we can't see. The things we can't see. And He is God and He yeah. will have His way. You can't argue with God and win. <laughs> and so now the question comes when a need is there, how do I pray? Well, I'm still going to pray in faith believing, mm -hmm. but also I'm going to say, Lord, I'm going to leave the answer with you. It's a new perspective on prayer. It's a, n a new kind of normal, as one of our well-known authors said. Mm -hmm. It's a new kind of normal for us in our prayer life as well as our whole life because this shakes up everything. Well, speaking of shaking things up, I could not have been more surprised. Joy, I thought the last time I saw you, and I, I looked at this picture with the new short hair, and, yeah. and I thought, I had long hair, I think, last what time. Is, you're a new person. You're an athlete. Apparently. <laughs> Where did this idea of running the Paris, we're talking friends, people, the Paris Marathon come to a girl who has no, had no interest in donning a running shoe? Well, it's interesting because just before mom became ill with the leukemia, the idea just popped into my mind. You know, I wanted to get fit and clearly wasn't. I spend more time behind a desk and behind books and computers than I do physically active, which isn't good. So I thought, well, maybe running might work, and it was sort of a desperate grab. And I'm that personality type that I say, well, if I'm going to run, I'll run a marathon, not run 5K, <laughs> which was <laughs> sort of silly. But anyway, that popped into my brain, and I think actually the Lord was preparing me now that I look back. I bought a pair of shoes and a book on running, and then mom became ill with acute leukemia. So of course I didn't run, I didn't train at all. So after she died, you're shaken, you know, you're just, you're trying to process all that's happened, and you're saying, okay, Lord, where to from here? And then it came into my mind, you should be running. And I thought suddenly, oh, a marathon in memory of mom. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? I mean, this is from the Lord, clearly. I mean, this is just dropping into my head, right? So I get online and I'm Googling and, and I discover the Marathon de Paris, the Paris Marathon is being held one year to the day that she died. Now that had to be some kind of stunning confirmation. Uh, I the date. I looked at it and thought, have I got, I've got to have the date wrong that mom died, right? So I went running upstairs, I looked at her, at her obituary, no, I am right, it was the 11th, you know, because you start to question everything when you see that kind of a coincidence. And uh, yes, so I, I cried, and then I talked to dad. I said, Lord, if you want me to do this, dad needs to be on board. And normally my dad would say, oh, let's just think about it. And, and he said right away, I think you're to do this, which was great that he did because mm -hmm. we had only a short period of time to register before the marathon filled up. And now so when, when Dad registered. gave the affirmative, were you also kind of signing on as assistant trainer? Not <laughs> because you practically became <laughs> a coach. The, the encourager <clears throat> and assisting with the costs and, and all that and then going there with her and, and, and encouraging her along the way. Yeah, yeah, excuse me, how about driving for four hours, 10 miles per hour <laughs> beside the runner? I mean, that's like <coughs> watching paint dry. Yeah. There's things that are more, I mean, that is so boring. And he was that's going, you can do it, way to go. Oh, meaningful, <laughs> cheerleader. Yeah. And then the day, what a thrill. You, of course, travel together. Mm -hmm. You were in this all the way. Take a look at this, what, 40,000? 40, 40,000 registrants. Runners. Yes. And that's the Champs Elysees. Yes, yes. All the, those are all runners, folks. Those really wow. are. <laughs> well, now um, somehow in this wild pack, you had creative ways of identifying each other. Yes. Finding mm. each other. I was wearing a colorful um, top, and those are arm sleeves. They're designed to keep you warm. Everybody wonders about those. But so I, I could kind of see. You know, <laughs> I, I sort of stood out a little. And then my dad said, "Okay, I'll meet you on the left-hand side at this this meeting spot, and the right hand at at another meeting spot." And we were able to to connect at that point. And then he met me again at the end, uh, just before the finish line. And uh, I I saw him. He sort of stood out on the course with a, he had a red coat on, and and so that helped me see him. <laughs> and we have. Now this is at the end of 
42 kilometers. 42.195K. And how long did it take to run it? I was five hours and 22 minutes. So I put wow. myself in the slowest group. I did run walk. That's actually maybe something that's important to mention. When you aren't physically active like this, it's, you need to, to be careful, do run, walk. And I had a, a team of medical professionals who counseled me. You don't just do this. You could really hurt yourself. So, <laughs> Let me show this. And yeah. speaking of hurting yourself, I, you were telling me, and you know, you think of it being so hot, but it, it was April, it was cool, yes. and you've got people discarding clothing all along yes. the track, Yes. the run. Yes, right at the beginning where you're standing there waiting, it's quite, um, it's very cold. And so they ended up, basically um, just throwing off you know, extra t-shirts and, and plastic ponchos that we were given all down the Champs-Élysées. So when I was running, I had to actually look down at the beginning of the race to make sure that I didn't trip. <laughs> it was fun. God provided a wonderful support group even over there. A good friend, Don yes. and Brigitte Pitcher, kept us for a week before the marathon, allowed us to get climatized, took us into Paris. God provided everything all the way around. It was amazing. It was his project, really. Yes. You know, really? We've, we've just had a wonderful guest who has been to heaven, mm -hmm. and I'm sure Mom was looking through a portal, cheering you on, too. Mm -hmm. yes. The Bible talks about the great cloud of witnesses yes. mm -hmm. cheering us on in the race mm -hmm. of life, and hope mm -hmm. is now part of that crowd. Yes. Yes. And what, a, what a beautiful and symbolic, that's the only anniversary that isn't an owie. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of your, your mom's critical events, Mother's Day, Thanksgiving weekend, Easter Sunday weekend, yes. are all pain mm -hmm. memories. Uh, April 11th, her home going, yes. your victory in her memory. Yes. And you raised a few shekels too, for yeah. a good cause. About $5,600 for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society of Canada. And you know, it was interesting, as I was running around 10 to 18, 20K, uh, somewhere in that zone, it kind of blurs together, but I, I wasn't really that tired at that point. And I had this wonderful time with the Lord. And in that, I could just sense Him smiling. And I thought, my mom's up there smiling. It's interesting you say that, because I could just, I could just feel that. Um, and I was filled with an overwhelming sense of gratitude to the Lord for all that He is doing in the middle of this. It's exciting to journey mm -hmm. with both of you. And tell us mm -hmm. what you're doing later today, Joy. Just interesting to step into your life, well, your normal life. It's it's this is it feels a bit um, normal for me, but I have a chance to speak with a group of Palestinian, Jordanian, and Israeli medical students, as well as some Canadian medical students, who are being brought together for a program on pediatric emergency medicine. But the purpose is to promote peace building in the Middle East. And as a political scientist, I have a chance to spend a couple of hours with them, and together we're going to talk about peace building and how we can live peaceably across our communities and and compassionately. And I'm going to talk uh, a bit about how we can live gracefully, live with grace and mercy with each other in the midst of long-standing conflict. Dad, I'm going to let you just quick final thought. We end on a positive note, Moira. God is good and He has carried us and continues to carry us through this. That's my word to those who are out there watching and who are hurting, uh, who have friends who are, who are, who are ill or, or who uh, are trying to console those who are grieving. Show your love. Do it in practical ways. And remember, God is in charge, always. Thank you, dear ones. And we would love to pray with you if you're needing further encouragement in your journey.